Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing conditional probability. This is still under the probability topics that we have discussed from the previous session. So the probability that an event B occurs when it is known that some event A has occurred is called a conditional probability. So in other terms, um, we can say from the definition that in order for the B to occur, um, we have it, it has to know that an event A has already occurred. Okay, so conditional probability is a probability that is based on a part of a sample space. Here, the probability of a partic particular outcome in the second event cannot be determined until the outcome of the first event is known. So meaning to say in order for us to know the outcome or the probability of the second event, we have to know first that uh, the first event has already happened or it has already occurred or we already know the outcome of the first event. So if A and B are events in a sample space with P of A is not equal to zero, we define the conditional probability of B given A by the formula P probability of B given A is equivalent to probability of A uh, disjoint B all over P of A. Again, our keyword here is given, given that or given given A is something like this. So that is our keyword in order for us to know that this problem is using conditional probability. So if two events are independent, we can say that P or probability of A disjoint B is equivalent to P of A times P of B. Okay, so let's try to solve some examples here. In a process that manufactures aluminum cans, the, the probability that a can has a flaw on its side is 0.02. The probability that a can has a flaw on the top is 0.03. And the probability that a can has a flaw on both the side and the top is 0.01. Again, it's both. So meaning to say, these are the common values or common data that we have. What is the probability that a can will have a flaw on the side, given that it has a flaw on top? Okay, so we are looking for the probability that it has a flaw on the side if it has a flaw on top. So let's try to determine our givens first. So we have P of the top is equivalent to 0 0.03 and the P at the side is given us 0 0.02 and again as we know flow flow on both the side and top so that is a side and the top is equivalent to 0 0.01 this um, inverted u here signifies the common data between the two events right so we have this um, values that we have here now again we are looking for the flow on the side given that it has a flaw on on top okay so we are looking for the probability that it has a flaw on the side given that it has a flaw on top okay and from the previous slide it says that the formula for this one is the uh, disjoint probability of a and b divided by p of a so we can equate this one as equivalent to probability of s t all over the probability that it has flow on top okay so since we already have the values we can just uh, directly substitute this so we have 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.03 that is equivalent to 0 0.33 so this is now our probability that it has flow on the side given that it has a flaw on top. Now, let's try to answer this second question. What is the probability that they can will have a flaw on top? So we are looking for the probability that it has a flaw on top, given that it has a flaw on the side. So um, the opposite. So from here, we can just have this as P of T inverted u s that is just basically the same with this one because these are the common data between the side and the top 
And then we have given that it has a flow on the side, so P of S. So that gives us 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.02, which is basically equivalent to 0 0.5. So this is now our probability that it has a flow on the top if it has a given flow on the side. Next one, we have in a freshman class exam, results show that 15% of the students failed physics, 16% failed English, and 2% failed both physics and English. Are two events, are the two events failing physics and failing English independent? Okay, so since we are talking about independence here, we can use the formula of this one to check if the events are independent. So we have here the disjoint of A and B is equivalent to P times P of, P of B or the probability of B. Okay, so let's just identify our, um, let's identify our given here. So we have P of the physics, failing physics is equivalent to 15%, so that is 0 0.15. And we also have the probability of the English. Failing English is 0.16 or 16%. And we have the probability that it would fail on both English and physics. So let's have P and E, sorry. So we have that is 2%. So that's 0 0.02. Are the two events failing physics and English uh, and failing English independent. So if you can recall, we can use this formula, the probability of failing physics and English is equivalent to the probability of failing physics and multiplied by the probability of failing the English. So we already have the data for all of this, so we can just substitute, so 0 0.02 is equivalent to 0 0.16, sorry, this is 0 0.15, multiplied by 0 0.16. So we can know if it's independent if, again, if they are equal. So 0 0.15 times 0 0.16, that is basically equivalent to 0 0.24 that is equivalent to 0 0.02. So as you can see, since they are not equal together, meaning to say the, the data is dependent. It is not independent. Okay? So basically, that's it for this video. I'll see you again on the next session of our discussion. Thank you.